everyone welcome back so in today's video we will be creating a racing game so not entirely this will just be the part one of the entire game so <clears throat> uh, before starting let me tell you how this is actually what this template is all about so what we can do is go into the epic games launch your unreal engine 5 so this is made in unreal engine 5 so you can choose your unreal engine 5 from here so once you have your unreal engine 5 installed <clears throat> and once you launch it you can actually see the vehicle over here so this is something to do with the advanced vehicle blueprint so what you can do is you can create a project out of it okay everything as usual so it's blueprint again and with the project name so cl uh, click on create i have already created a project and also imported the vehicles that is available in the city sample blueprint so city sample blueprint how to import a vehicle from city sample blueprint and use it within unreal engine 5 i have already described it in the previous video if you haven't watched it please watch that before you come over here so that you can use the vehicles like this even if not you can actually import some other vehicles into this or actually replicate the uh, the initial one that they have already given you so how do we start the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to set this as my uh character uh, the main player so i'm going to set this to player zero the processing will be player zero over here so <clears throat> for you guys it will be this vehicle okay so what you can do is you can just disable it over there add it to the uh, sample city sample vehicle over here so it looks better now i'll show you how this game is actually taking place i can just click on selected viewport and you can see there is this vehicle which is actually racing us and we can actually go now the throttle etc can be changed for that vehicle as well and the racing continues okay so this is what i'll be teaching you in today's tutorial okay so let's see how it goes yeah so the first thing is you have the vehicle over here i'm going to recreate it for one more vehicle so you can see how exactly it, how it will work so a few things that we have to note here is we need a spline that is how the vehicle will actually know what path to actually choose it can be a spline or a target point but spline is preferable over here so we need to have a spline actor and the vehicle should actually accelerate and keep the steering as per uh, uh, like it should move uh, in accordance with the spline okay so you can actually change the spline anyway yeah so we'll just start with the spline so you can see i have already have track and track one so i'll just create a new track so just right click click on the blueprint class click on actor and you can call this track 3 or track new okay so what you do is click on track new and what you can do is go to add click on search for spline and spline that's all what you have to do compile and save this now what you can do is you're going to create a new track entirely for a new vehicle right so you can keep it here and then you can start defining a track so this is the track i'm going to place my track here what you have to do is click on the next one so you can see this is how it was and you can see there is a new node available over here click on this node okay press the button alt keep pressing the button alt and then drag it again so you get the next node you okay, know this can be moved anywhere now you need the track to be a bit straight so you again drag it friend you can actually make the vehicle turn a bit too okay so now this is the track now let's just make it a little more bigger yeah, till here and then now we need to actually bend it so i just bend it yeah, and keep it like this okay so that's how much i'll be using right now okay now the important thing is we need to have a vehicle so the for the advanced vehicle blueprint you can actually see get the vehicles within the vehicle template blueprints sports car so you can see sports car pawn is the one that you will we'll be working on so you can actually click on that and create a duplicate pawn and we can call this the new pawn so i have already uh, replicated it once so you can actually uh, duplicate it once more so sorry uh, duplicate it once and then call it any name you want okay and now what you can see is pretty much all the data so don't look at this data that's what we'll be recreating here so let's see all these things are not required right now just build it from scratch okay. yeah so let's see <clears throat> before starting let's see what we can do event sorry not event let's see we have a lot of data available here input access move forward set the throttle 
okay I said the brake brake light so brake light is a different function get back to that later there is a steering input the value is coming in from the arrow so one if that vehicle was actually used as a, a player zero as a processing if we are actually processing that player you could have used it much better with all these controls now what we are going to do here is when the event when since we are not getting any kind of data in what we can do is we can get the vehicle moment set the steering input okay over here and i want to set that to say one okay compile and save this now this is a new pawn let's just keep it here okay and click on play and now if i see okay there is no change apparently let's see by doing some more changes say 90 degree oh okay yep that's good good so you right click on play that didn't work well. So let's see why. Yo, okay, <laughs> that was even end play, event begin play. <laughs> Sorry for that. So yeah, click on compile and save and let's see what happens. We can see the vehicle has turned to the right. Okay. So basically it means that you can actually control the vehicle's input as well as the throttle by using these two functions that we get from the vehicle moment okay so okay so similar to the steering input we can also change this to have uh, the throttle input so set throttle input and we can keep a value over here so the value is say for example one compile this and save this and if you click on play, you can see the vehicle in the right starting to move in the highest potential possible and it's moving pretty much straight. It doesn't follow the spine. So we need to uh, figure out how it actually follows the spine. So it is actually a pretty simple uh, method. You can actually make sure that the vehicle is following the, like getting the closest points on the spline with respect to the vehicle and then make it follow that nearest point so it's not like these uh, points over here it's just any single point on this particular spline and i hope you guys are familiar with the tangent concept so the it actually looks for the tangent or the, uh, over here and then finds the nearest value to the tangent and then it keeps going so let's figure that out so the throttle can basically be applied from here say if, for example let's start with a 0.5 value okay now for the steering function so i just call this the steering fn okay so this is my steering function and for here we need to get the the important part is we need to get this particular track within this within the function so that we can actually find the nearest point to it so for that what we do is we just click on the input and add a parameter here called the say we can call it the spline okay and we're going to change this into the object so the object uh, the path is path i guess it is track so track new okay so this is the track new and we can just sorry track new okay we can choose an object reference and this is a spine with multiple points so we're going like this and now what we have to do is we have to just call it a function get a copy of it okay and <clears throat> The next part is we need to get the spline out of it and we need to get the closest value, so closest uh, to the world location. So this is exactly what we want. And now let's see. Um, yeah. This is the spline, this is the location, and this should be the world location. Okay. And this should be in respect to what? So we need to add a data here. This is called the, sorry, this is a, this is returning a transform. We indeed need a get. Closest, sorry, get close, find closest tangent closest to the spline. This is what we need, not the transform. So we just to choose the world location, and for the world location over here, what we have to give is our actor get actor location. <coughs> So this helps, okay. And then <clears throat> moving on to step, uh, what we need is this particular value. We need to normalize this value. So normalizing this value, and what we can do here is uh, we will need to split this value. So if it was UE4, you could have actually 
multiplied a scalar with a vector but over here a vector with a scalar indeed but here it's not possible so you can just see that it's again a vector which is being able to uh, which is being coming over here so instead what you can do is you can just uh, do it like so um, split this particular pin so you can split it and you can just choose a multiply okay so if you have a better method you can definitely use that so yeah i'm just going to multiply this with 100 we, we again multiply it and then just make a vector out of it make vector and then combine the pins back okay now i have to add them into the world location actor location so a plus would be you know okay yes i want to add it like this it's the same but so that's done then now we need to find the location closest to this so find tangent sorry find closest point okay oh yeah we can't get it from here we need to get it from the spine so find this becomes the world uh, location so find tangent closest to world location we're just going to add this to the location and make this the world okay now for the next step we will have to get the rotation okay so for that what we'll have to do is find the look at rotation for this particular value mm, let's see it should be find look at rotation okay should be the target and the starting point should be the get actor location this should be the start value and then we will need to use our delta rotator to actually get the value. So get actor rotation, multiply it with delta, get it in here. Okay. <clears throat> and now we will have to clamp this particular value. So we just have to make it make range i'm sorry make clamp of card clamp mm -mm. okay yeah we can't clamp it as a whole we'll have to just make it out of an individual one yeah no nope, no nope, no nope. make range clamped okay that's not the one probably mm, let's make map yes it's map range clamp okay got it yep my bad so next thing is like we'll have to give the ranges for this so minus 90 90 and minus 1 and 1 so this makes the values over there and now we need to have the output so let's see the output over here so for the function steering function we need an output okay let this be the steering angle okay now what is it yeah. this particular value over here i'm gonna okay now this is not a boolean value this should be a single value and this could be a float i guess it's a float yeah it's a float yeah that's good now you what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pin this over here and that is pretty much the value so let's go to the event graph and then let's do one thing let's just call this function out here okay but for that we will need the splines to be inserted so for that we can give get actor get all actors of the class and this is track new okay and we can just insert the spline over here and what we can do is we can just print out the steering angle okay that's pretty much it that's two seconds and let it be in a green color okay compile save this and let's see what happens 0.75 it doesn't follow this spline yet but we got the value here like 0.75 was the value let's just keep rotating the vehicle a little so the value was one okay but still it did not rotate it okay let's see 
what is wrong okay so what's wrong is this is being implemented just one time so instead we need this function to be implemented every time and we haven't implemented the set steering function so we can just do that and you know what the steering has to be shouldn't be in this part it should be instead be in an event tick because it has to be implemented every second or millisecond so let's go over here add this copy the vehicle component paste it here and then say set steering input and get the value right away from here compile and save this now let's see what's the value here you can see that the vehicle is starting to move but there is some problem there it's not moving as per direction let's see what happened yep let's see let's see okay it's not being updated let's see what is the issue so track new vehicle got it setting the steering input it's pretty much similar now let's see something wrong with the function <laughs> the tolerance value okay we just made a clamp out of it finding the location mm. adding the pin that's okay <clears throat> find look at rotation just multiply it with the delta but it seems that here the issue is this should be the location closest so we have to find the location closest to this location so find closest location let's try this out and this should be the world location this should be the target compile and save this then graph let's save this division to yeah it's zero it's cool okay compile save this let's see it yes so you can see the vehicle is following the track okay and yeah that's good okay that's good so the vehicle is following the track and once the track is over it doesn't know what to do next so we can just so what you have to do is like keep extending the track okay so it's pretty much easy you can just press the alt button and then just keep dragging okay so it's pretty much easy just focus on okay yeah just messing it up so let's see what can be done here yeah so the important thing is the track should be pretty big okay so this is how we actually work for the d shift game so there will be definitely better ways to actually work on this but this is a this is not a bad option this is how the tracks can be defined now once you have this as an npc you can actually avoid collisions of this vehicle as well okay so with that 